Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Summer PCS. My name is Derek, joined by Clement. Thank you to CDBC Bank, who is our official sponsors. Along the lines as well, Riot Games, Carry Live, and Garena helping us out with the PCS League operation of full production to get where we are for this final game. Mr. Chu, the battle of our top tier Titans at the moment, with PSG taking a loss earlier. CDBC and Deep Cross Gaming, or CDBC Flying Oyster, give them their full name, versus DCG. Seven win streak for CDBC Flying Oyster, five for Deep Cross Gaming. These truly are our best teams at the moment who have been on a hot streak. Absolutely, and we have to start from the mid laners talking about this. We have the mid game sort of brawler comp coming in from DCG, and yep. you have Nesty on the Talia pick. Probably his best pick right now. He's four for zero on the champion with an 18.5 KDA. It's almost oh, yeah. a must ban on his part. And on the other hand, you have Mission, who is our best laner. He's always been able to crush Nesty in lane. However, DCG are uh, proponents of just banning up mission. The last time they banned, they just straight up triple banned a mission and yep. made them play something like a Galio where the composition looked a lot worse. So I think we're going to see a very similar dynamic right here where it's, you know, mission, you don't get to play your late game champions. Nesty doesn't play those anyways. It's all going to be about me. I mean, Nesty, yeah, like things like Talia, Swain, Silas. We can really go into the depth of champion pool, but first looking at the left side, uh, blue side, I should say, CBC Flying Oyster. Same roster that you know. And the more important thing is, Clement, halfway through the split, you know, Atlan came in and we're like, are they really going to run Atlan? He played four games and then Shun came back. And I have to say, Shun is by far the better choice with what we're seeing on the Rift. Absolutely. You look at the stats, the laning stats, the plus over uh, 1.3k at 15. Yeah. The team fights uh, there really isn't all that much comparison you know i i just i just feel like it might have been a um sort of chemistry issue earlier on in the split where they were in atlin and with that bottom lane being short up i have to say i still feel like ctbc across the board maybe outside of the support have the better players they yeah. raw talent wise I, I don't think it's a one for one comparison at all but what i will say dcg have on their side is just the drafting. I think DC just been much more consistent with what they want to play, how they want to play, and I think the players have been able to fill those roles very nicely. And and use these little pockets so well, right? Like Leaky's a great example who is our MVP of week number four for a reason. Things like the Mordecai's are popping up in specific matchups. We also know that through jungle, like Han has been the only one to pick out the Belveth. We've had a Yone, we've had Nesty pull out crazy stuff as always. Like the Seraphine, you never really know what you're going to get with the DCG drafts. And even though, Clement, we have seen a lot of standard drafts, you always have to worry about, like, those pocket counters, those, I guess, lane bullies that will come through, even though on paper, CDBC Flying Oyster have the better laners. Like, rest bully Frank Esports YSKM when we saw them the other day. But Leaky has also been a surprise here for DCG. Absolutely, and... If we look at the champion pools here, there is a couple of differences. I will say Leaky typically has been more of the blue side blind pick. And Rest has been, um, you know, they, they don't give him the counter as much. It used to be Graves, but uh, now I think they're much more focused on getting the Gnar. And I think that's going to be the big point of the matchup here. Leaky, I don't think he has the same champions like a YSKM, where he can take the, uh, where he can take the Camille, or he would be willing to take the Aurelia to try and counter rest. Yeah, there, there's so many of those picks, like so many players like that in the world, but I, I feel like here with CFO on blue side, maybe it's gonna shift the dynamics as we get in the big ban. Triple mid lane ban already, Clement, and <laughs> Seraphine against DCG, not really that new. Nope, we can see that DCG now without the Corky, they can skip over that ban. They're probably gonna ban the Victor next and be willing to leave everything open here. Victor is an interesting champion. I honestly don't feel like Victor is completely ban worthy, but DCG went for it regardless. So we'll see here if they go for it. If they do, it does mean that you have things like Swain left up. You have what are some Silas? Other oh no, so Silas the ban. Yeah. Galio, Talia. Talia's been first pick worthy, Clement. I feel like CFO are willing to take the Talia away from Nesty oh, if yeah. it does come to it. Like the remaining options aren't really that enticing. I I'm perfectly willing to go for a blind pick to Leah early on. <laughs> or is it not? Is it the 6 and 0 nah for rest instead? <laughs> like, it would make a lot of sense. Flashing at Leaky. And that's uh, that's good. That's a bit of a call out.
to the enemy top laner. He's not picking us. I know he isn't. He's not. He's not. Right, yeah. Darius has something open, okay. Uh, I don't like do this first pick. Don't like this first pick at all. I think DCG are perfectly happy going to Sivir into it, and uh, you are just going to give away some other much stronger yeah. picks. They could just go the Yumi, and I would say just straight up go to Leo at <laughs> this yeah, point. Yeah, good point. Yumi, you have your AD for the third rotation. Both Talia and Nar would be massive takeaways. Oh yeah. So Yumi comes through as one. I like that you mentioned Nar. I mean the Nar may be a priority yet. Leaky's just gonna pull it out and Rest mm. doesn't get a chance to play it yet again. Remember that Leaky is also three and zero on the Nar, so yep. uh, worth mentioning the strength of this top laner. Now Clement, other side. Talia maybe a takeaway from DCG instead. Yeah, I, I feel like they need to take away this one. CFO, on the other hand, might be thinking about um, a first combo right here. Alistar does very well against the Yumi and makes her uh, dismount so much more dangerous. And you can also chain it up with the seismic shove. So I feel like that's actually a fairly good uh, champion pick here. Also a good takeaway from Woody, on the other hand. Good yeah. against Sivir, too, which is the most important part. I forgot to <laughs> process that in my mind. But yeah, Alistar right. definitely great against Sivir coming in. You said to me on Friday, you can block one, but not the other, you know? Yep. So, uh, going to be hard here from Chris Carter. They picked the Sivir matchup anyway, even with the Alistar staring at him in the face. So, a good response here from CFO. Now, Clement, I'm more curious about what gets banned away because we know DCG have got the NAR matchup. They want to make it as safe as possible. But Mission has always been a player that, you know, has been one of the greater laners. Like, Syndra's been played. Things like the Galley, you talk about Victor. Uh, Azir is still open as well. What's your thought process? Uh, Azir definitely taken away already. Uh, oh, I point. would say that DCG probably are looking into Swain, but I uh, don't see if we're just going to ban that straight off the bat. Yeah. That's the even place. A very, very nice Swain off of that one. Without that, I'm not sure which champions he can go for. There are some nasty pocket picks that we can just kind of... Uh, um, talk about i feel like dcg still needs some sort form of hard engage so something like a vigar actually oh, yeah. doesn't look all that bad in this situation um i'm not sure they, they are gonna pick it but then again i'm looking down nesty's champion pool and there isn't all that much left some outside the box picks would be like i, I would say yone and vigar are somewhat viable against the talia here okay well i, I like the thought of a yone right but we know that nesty and Clement, I mean, Galio's not engaged, we know that, it's always follow-up, so... Kind of looking at options here. Yone, CFO, we're yeah. obviously thinking the same thing. I wonder if Vigar really is the option, as Hana might even have the Wukong here to supplement part of the engage we talked about, to give something a little bit more reliable for DCG. Yeah, whenever you're playing up against Azari, you want to stack that engage and kill her in an instant. Right yeah. now, they have good follow-up and chase, but they don't have the, I, I think, the starter. So, Wukong definitely fits into this composition here. For CFO, on the other hand, I feel like they're trying to go into more tempo and more bot lane focus. So, game plan here does very well in that role. You can have a safe top lane, and then just throw the camera on bot lane. Help yourself get those tower dives. Yep. Um, And you are looking at a, a, a jungle pick here. The main idea is you just want to have, I think, crowd control for dive. I, I'd say Diego is fine here. Uh, you know, not the best pick. Poppy would obviously be the Trundle. best pick here, but uh, Trundle, I'm less. Uh, I, I don't really like the Trundle all that much, to be mm -hmm. honest. I feel like the Trundle doesn't help you engage and it doesn't help you tower dive. Um, if they go for the Trundle, I think Diego is a lot better with the crowd yeah. control. And I feel like CFO actually are just, you know, they're listening into this broadcast. They're just going, hey. Clement, Clement said, game play. Clement, Clement quick, said, quick, Trundle swap, bad. Diego. Swap it. <laughs> swap it over. As you said, though, I mean, we don't get DCG with hard engage, but a lot of uh, follow-up engage, Clement, but, you know, it's how reliable is this, I, I guess I should ask. Uh, for DCG, this is kind of a one-punch composition. Yeah. You go in. You don't get what you look for. You're right. And that's kind of the end. Um, okay. I, I would say that CFO, I, I like their draft. I feel like the, the Alistar was just such a nice tie in because yeah. it, it deals so well with so many of these engaged tools. You see a Galio charging up, you just headbutt him out of there. You see a Nar coming in, same thing. He doesn't have Unstoppable in any of his abilities. You just headbutt him out of there. So. I have to give the, the, the overall composition to CFO. I, I feel like yep. they have much more 
answers to just a straight walk-in coming in from DCG. Sure, and, and not only the Alistar, right, but I feel like what we look at on the other side, like the Talia too, against this composition, you know, a lot of one punch, but if you want to escape Glamour, if you want to get out, Weaver's Wall is going to stop a lot of those members before they have those cooldowns up and available again. So I do feel like there's a lot of options to delay further mobility. And for CDBC Flying Oyster, I think you were saying like, okay, strongest, site, strongest solo lanes, strongest individual star talent as well, for sure. Deep Cross Gaming have had the better drafts. That's what you were saying to me yes. coming into this. DTG have had really good drafts, but this time around, I feel like, as you said, really good counters from CDBC Flying Oyster to predict that DCG were going to go for, I guess, this one punch. I think the main issue I have with the draft is the, the Yumi Sivir was just a little bit too early, and I, I don't think it was yeah. necessarily needed. Uh, I feel like they would have been much stronger if they just to Leonar instantly. Leonar, yeah. <laughs> and you still have all the bot lane there to, to just pick up the, the, the yeah. champions. You have the, the Kalista anyway, so... Uh, they kind of tunneled into playing Sivir Yumi, which is very, very strong, but we haven't seen it be all that successful, I, I have to say. It requires a lot of coordination. It's not hard CC right at the start. It actually allows a lot of time for the enemy to react to you. So yeah. you have to have things planned out two steps in advance to kind of chase down the sidelines. We'll see it's, if ECG can do it. It's something that's had, you know, like not only a rough time in PCS, but I feel like a lot of people have been adjusting to it, right? Uh, a lot of big changes in Sivir. One of the biggest ones, right? You're not giving that movement speed anymore to your allies that burst mm. off the start of the ulti, which was so big. Uh, and, and with the chase up as well, with the fact that it's not a hard initiated, more of that late game carry potential. I just, uh, yeah, I, I guess adaptation is what I'm trying to get at here. And we'll have to see if DCG's bottom lane are going to work out fine here. Or if that Alistar pick is just going to screw with them a bit. Because CFO versus DCG, this is our battle of the tide first. Seven win streak for CFO. And for Deep Cross Gaming, it's more like five. But both are 11 and three. With the winner of this going to 12 towards our final week of the PCS. Clement, we've only got three games for both these teams after this as well. And I, I feel like DCG have an easier schedule. I was talking to you before. For DCG, their schedule looks quite realistic to get first. But this is going to matter if they can pull it off. Because BYG, Jewish team, and Frank Esports should be wins for DCG. But CFO, man, they could completely upset that and deny them from locking in first in this split. Now with PSG being taken down a peg, we are talking about potentially two new teams in the top two. So yeah. that would be massive for either one. I do feel like at the end of the spring split playoff, CFO just kind of ran out of steam. Their decision making sure. was a lot worse in the final set. And if they can, you know, play a little fewer games that's going to be a huge boon to them we are going to get a bit of a level one poke in here nothing major as koala just getting the jungle. yeah making sure that jungle starting on the bottom side so a path up to the top side is uh leaky is just going to be looked at for now and I was, I was just wondering i'm like hang on a minute what are we getting up in the top side nothing apart from wards into the entrance of the jungle defensive wards in fact from dcg while gemini is also starting in this bottom side and seems to be pathing upward. Clement, walk me through the early game here and, and lane setup because uh, with a, a lot of negativities for DCG and how they draft this, I kind of want to know how pre-6 they get involved, if at all. I don't think we're going to see much pre-6 at all. Okay. I feel like this is going to be a very quiet early game for them. And then it's going to be about where Nesky can move to. This is a super interesting setup. He's not yep. running with the health port. He's running with double mobility summoners here. The ghost and the nerfed predator. A lot of them. Yeah, so he has a lot of power in the side lanes. But um, at the same time, I don't feel like there's enough crowd control for either of these side lanes for him to really invest early on. So I think it's yeah. going to be a post six, six move. He's probably going to heroic entrance into one of these side lanes and then chase up with his remaining summon. As you said, I mean, this is CC, like, uh, probably looks to be top, right? Play around the Meganar timer. Mm. But such a specific window when for CFO, Clement, does it just come down to scaling on top of that as well? Because I feel like at DCG, we still have really strong scaling elements there. But when you have such reliable, what, anti dive, uh, space control, like so many things that come into, into favor. The CFO, their scaling might be more impactful as 
Let's ignore Ooh. that, because Chris Carter might get stunned up here. But at the very least, Sean won't have enough damage earlier on. Clement, my question still stands. Thoughts on, uh, on scaling and the conversation around it? Uh, so, I would say that, you know, if it was a patch ago, I'd say CFO definitely have far, far better scaling. This patch, Sivir is just such a monster. I feel like she throws off a lot of these calculations. And I will sure. say in the late game, it is it is very positioning dependent because CFO don't really have a traditional tank outside of the Alistar, of course. So the ricochets, I just feel like even just a three auto attack ricochet, a, a, a triple attack can wa waste CFO. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of members here that um, if they don't take care of their spacing, they could just go down. Uh, overall, I still think CFO have a stronger late game because yeah. in the late game, it's just harder to die than just chase down targets in general. True. But I would say that, uh, you know, it, it's definitely possible for a Sivir pop off to take DCT back off the top. I think what most people forget is the fact that Sivir now, like, it doesn't infinitely bounce and go through everyone, but then never come back. Like, eight bounces. But if you yeah. are, as you said, in a choke, with no one else there, as we look at the 2v2 yet again, it'll continue bouncing back as Squalor gets two of them, three of them. Imagine if that's late game at three item Sivir, it's gonna hurt a lot more as DCG explore their options in the bottom lane. As you said, there's no CC here. It's gonna be hard to, to kill an Alistar or a Zeri. They need Koala to engage into this one, and I don't think they will. So this is just Ukon finishing his path and being yep. underneath the tower to see if something does happen. Uh, most likely oh, not, and ooh, we actually get spotted. Yeah, a bit of vision, and uh, for Gemini, straight up towards the Gromp. Already going there anyway, but maybe this opens up the option to clean up towards the bottom side or look towards something mid. At the very least, uh, Clement, I was going to say before that as CFO gets a 2 on engage. Again, Koala! That spot of the jungle hurts quite a lot in CCG. They might have the Yumi, but he's getting some really nice knockups. So here is where Nesty starts to come into play. He's got that level five and oh shit. Walking into it, Koala's still here though and Ghost is burned again. Knocked up Chris Carter is the one that checked this Koala. Sacrificing his life as the flash is burned. But the hero's entrance in the nick of time. Sean so unlucky with the timing of this. He's running at him. Flash is shield to Duran. The counter punch Clement, it begins. Oh, they really overplayed their hand onto that one. DCG had an extra summoner coming in from the uh, the Yumi, and then Galio actually ghosted in to make sure he was in range for that heroic entrance. Beautiful yeah. stuff by Nesty. Uh, honestly, I felt like CFO actually kind of handed that to DCG. <laughs> it would not have been possible uh, to make that play unless CFO all in onto that one. And you know, unfortunately, that's exactly what they did. Look at how much different uh, distance. Galio actually gets here. So he starts on the top side of the mid lane and ends up ghosting and running towards the bot, making it in the end here. You know, just looking at this bot lane, Greystar from Skata flashes to finish off the kill, gets the heal from the Yumi, and then you just get the chase down from Nesta. Amazing for the duo, the pathing of Woody standing in front of the Zeri. Like, you can't do anything because your Q is uh it's not an auto attack it's, well it is an auto attack it's an ability auto attack. you know what i mean i'm not going to explain yeah, it yeah. like what a pain um but the point is standing in front of it woody was able to deny the damage chris carter survives to assist unfortunately not getting the kills but still getting enough to pick himself up a noon quiver and nesty's now on the board clement i guess we're seeing how dcg want to play at the comps now that they're level six as gemini has himself a level six two harder's only four uh, now, mid might be going well, bot might be going well, but I think jungle could be a bit of a problem. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Hana is this far behind. Uh, so far, a couple. The only thing we've seen him do is actually just go to the bot lane. Now, of course, a lot of this does come off the fact that we did see Wukong nerf on this path, but I didn't think it would be that big of a difference. I'm kind of surprised that we were paying that close attention to his pathing. Yeah. Um, but he's definitely further behind than he should be in. I don't feel like Gemini actually even invaded on him, so this is just straight pathing diff. I mean, it's insane. It's, again, almost double. Nesty, the flag goes up, but he's also getting out CS in the lane, as you'd expect of most Galios. He picked up the kill, so the gold's not going to be that much different. And remember that Predator in lane, plus the fact his hero's entrance is almost available, is going to be a big key factor. But with Gemini outbalancing this Clement, that uh, I think is going to change a lot with 
all of his jungle respawning up as well. He's got a Herald as well, with Rest doing pretty well in the GP versus Nah matchup. And Gemini's just gonna go for the objective straight out. That was a little bit too obvious from BP. Bad acting on his part. Galio oh. clearly on the way there, and they also oh. suspect Hana. The damage. Oh my god. Heartbreak is available. Doesn't even use it. Leaky not going into Meganar. This Gemini stays here. Is that Conqueror gets fully stacked? It's just so worrisome. With Gemini now forcing his way into the Herald. I gotta say, Rust is BM, but he ain't that BM. That was yep. the most obvious speak <laughs> that Leaky could have thrown at Rust. Rust just backs off, waits until the Galio to show again. And they even kind of guess where Hana is on the map. So, Ooh. great find for Zeal, though. Yumi, hang on, going full on in. Gemini flashes against the wall and Heartbreak is out, but we'll get the final chapter. Jumping back in, the Megana from rest ecg were willing to take this one excuse me it was leaky who turns the fight with nesty full on inning as well clement when the ulties come together that one two punch hurts like hell ah so beautiful coming in from dcg on that one they managed to get a beautiful pincer and like you said, it was all about the ultimates. Leaky into the wall, Galio to finish off, and they also well, caught the Kalia. Oh, here we go. 1v1 and 80 carry. It's Siva versus Zeri through the minion wave, getting blocked out, but the lightning crash down gives so much movement speed. Damage as well. Shouldn't keep the going with an auto heal up. Dodges away. Sean gets the solo bolo as close as they come. Yeah, what a good kite back from Shun on that one. And you can see Chris Gata, he was trying to chase it down, but he misses the comeback on the boomerang. A bit slower on the speed into that one. We will pop into the topside fight again. I think the key difference here is Vision has a much harder time trying to impact this. He goes down first on the left side, and then Leaky with the flash in for the positioning was so critical. Just getting the two-man wall bang and then finishing off the rest. As you said, Clement, the punch is huge. Like, DCG used those ulties, all collapsing at once. The damage a bit slow to come out, which also supports your point at the end. But for DCG, when that punch comes down, if CFO are in the middle of it, it's a disaster. And disaster it is with now a 2 plus K gold lead. And the Herald that was stolen and went over to Nesty. So, 2 0 and 3, 2 0 and 1, Soul Lane set up for success. And that jungle lead we're talking about means less and less now that we have seen how much work Hana can do, even being a level or, or about 30 CS behind. Yeah, and this really changes a lot of things here because in the mid lane, Galio is so fed to the point he should be able to shove in, completely disregard missions to Leia. Yeah. And the side lanes are under so much threat, he might not have the ghost, but he can just walk over with the Predator and start finding damage on the side. So I feel like CFO are now in the, almost being forced into a completely defensive mode. And if they want to make plays, it, I think they have to start with mid. It has to be with someone Oh, uh, Sean, as he goes over the wall, lands no damage. This happens with Woody as well, so kind of dangerous. As Koala comes back in, but that was Sean having to get out in the nick of time, taking half his health for the trade. Yeah, we can see CFO trying to look for some ganks into the bottom side. The pings for the blue side went down. But again, it's all about how this Galio can impact those lanes. He can cancel out the cannon barrage quite easily. And I, I would say he will have a lot more impact than the Talia um, oh, yeah. in that regard too. So, no, I, I feel like CFO are left just trying to find Nesty, a, a kill onto Nesty first and see where they can go from there. And I would say that, you know, Nesty is 5-0, and zero, almost 100% kill participation. I would say that, that, that CS normally would be worrying, but as you alluded to earlier, there's so much damage. Everfrost is now completed. And I wanted to look at the other sideline as well, Clement. Leaky's kind of doing what Rest has been doing on this now. 30 CS up right now. That team fight ult is insane. And Rest is behind in a lane for the first time, I think, in a very long time. I don't think I've seen Rest, you know, in a, in a dangerous position, despite being the GP in quite a while. Yeah, and this is down 30 CS, which is quite a bit uh, <laughs> to look at. I, I don't think he's going to be coming back into this lane anytime soon. So CFO basically have to, to wait on 
and try to see if they can use uh, the Weaver's Wall and it shoots damage at this point to claw something back. Now, Chris Kata is by himself, so that could be an opening here. A CFO don't want to give up this Infernal Dream. Ward on the back of the pit. Gemini is still quite fed here with the Kempunk Chain Sword. But Nesty using himself to ult the as Gemini. Heartbreaker, yep, he's out. And can't get the steal. DCG in with the Infernal now as the Hex Soul comes in. And Clement, what do you think this time? Because you had a pretty strong opinion about it last game. Kind of curious as to your take. Uh, definitely more favorable to DCG, I think, okay. <laughs> in this situation. Uh, the, the keep away is less useful when you're trying to kite out other people, and I think yep. it's a, a little bit more beneficial if you're actually chasing down targets. Nice and um, though. Yeah, that's gonna be some pretty bonkers use of uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next second. Yeah, I, I, you know, on, on ricochets as well, like, mm. it's uh. I, mean, I don't know, does it follow up on all ricochets? Surely, it wouldn't. It's just the first proc, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's the first ricochet only. But, Ron hits. to be fair, if uh, you're ricocheting that much, eight bounces, by the time it goes to someone else, you know, maybe we're like 10 seconds down the track, you get the second proc assault, and <laughs> it comes through all again, on constant resetters. Jungler's going to meet each other, but look at Woody, now on top of Ana, and going so deep here is to force Gemini back. And it's right before the next Herald spawns up in 30 seconds. It shouldn't move to the top side, and Koala now solo defending out the turret, but DCG a beelining it to the top lane. As Nesty with the Predator. Gemini mission now scared to kite back, but kite back they'll do so successfully. As DCG aren't slowing the pace anytime soon. That's a really fast Galio trying to walk out here. It looks like CFO are just gonna try and uh... You know, slow people down, see if they can get a lucky pick with the Cannon Barrage, but they're not actually committing members to the full-on interchange this fight. They know the chase potential is off the right there too high. They're happy to just feed rest a little bit for CS, get him in position here, and I'm interested to see how they can use the tempo that they've now acquired in the mid lane and bot lane to set up for something else. They, they can still very much use the Weaver's Wall. I don't think we've seen a Weaver's we Wall just gone. yet. Uh, but this would be a good opportunity because someone has to pick up the mid, someone has to pick up the bottom side, and maybe Talia can go top. 30 CS lead from mission, you're right, we have not seen one. Uh, for this mid lane Talia, I think, was it you and I having a discussion where a lot of Talia's these days, it's not the first couple of walls, like, you know, what we say with Twisted Fade and other global or semi-global ultimates. Mm. Like, for these Talia's, it's the third, fourth dragon fights, it's these second heralds or you know baron setups as well that means so much to the player is you know we're gonna have to wait and see mission is still one of the greatest mid laners in the pcs we have that expectation that this talia that is almost 50 cs up will be able to get up and, and set up one of those walls yeah and all it really takes is just one seismic shove onto the back line um, that's it you know sivir still very short range he can find the range so if, if you can find that uh, with the spell shield down, and that instantly goes for the fight here. It just seems like a little bit too late here uh, as Koala tries to do some cheeky look back on the Herald. Yeah. Uh, interesting play. Maybe I try to get the knockback so he can get a pulverize around. Maybe it's a big brain play. You know, DCG okay, walking okay. next to the Herald, they feel safe. But speaking of safe, I mean, that turret is a, a breeze away from falling down. So for DCG, still looking for their first turret blood. As we pan down to the bottom lane, Rest now has 500 doubloons so he can get the first upgrade on his ulti. Will CFO shift their jungler to top side to try and force down Nesty? Nesty does have the magic shield still. It's going to be very hard to take down. I don't think they can manage this unless Nesty walks into a combo. Okay. Not going to do so. Actually keeps his distance and just uses the Winds of War, which was buffed on 12.13. Get a little bit more percent of damage coming from that ability. Yeah, I mean, look, he's going to be doing a lot of damage considering he's uh, fast tracking to his second item as well. And ST is someone who, so far this game, has been the better mid lane as he said. As forward goes Leaky Hunt is behind him. That's why Bully out rest. That's a good game plan from DCG as Hunter survives on the back end. And this turret is going to be dropping, making the second turret in a matter of minutes for Deep Cross game. Yeah, massive lead for them. And this opens up the entire bot side. Or the chase down. 
Is that mission with the TP here? Uh, I think he's just trying to get into position for the next break. Yep. He's uh, got an easily large rod as well. But hey, DCG, almost up 4,000 gold. I mean, this third dragon, we're going to have to see a pretty good Weaver's Wall because almost on second items is Chris Carter. As Zonya's just picked up by Nesty Clement. And that Trinity Force up by Leaky as he backs away should evolve too. As we're going to get the dragon started, but DCG just aren't here yet. All right, let's see if we can get the first beavers. Should be easy, and they don't even need it. No way. As we have uh, Tempo TPs going up onto the other side to take the top lane tower. So see if they'll at least avert disaster and give themselves even more time to scale up, especially for me. I was going to say, but Leaky does have himself a dead man's play. So we have second item here. Kind of interesting. We've always seen Black Cleaver. Like, this Nar is obviously Clement. A little bit more focused about that all-in we talked about and living to see the fight so that, you know, Chris Carter can clean it up. Yeah, Dead Bands is very situational. I would say it's a little bit better in lane and better in chase downs. As going under turret, maybe he's going to keep it alive for a little bit longer. Under turret, Koala doesn't get the stun though as Leaky jumps back in. Ambitious from the Nara is now Shun is here to help the fight. Weaver's Wall, Clement, it's not coming through because Mission is looking towards the bottom side for now. So unfortunate here is, oh no. Mission has flash cleanse available, flashes over the wall, and is having one hell of a quiet game. Yeah, I'm very surprised that, uh, you know, Talia was kind of the uh, force pickup here coming in by CFO. I don't really think uh, Mission's Talia is on the same level as something like Nessie. I, I feel like he lacks a bit of that, well, you know, I'm just going to leave lane and so be it. The kind of attitude coming in from his side. So very quiet from him. And Hana's oh. coming in. On the hunt, actually pops as well. And Hana's sprinting at them as Nesty flashes with the Everfrost. There's the ulti from Shun in the back line as he tries to cut it out. But Nesty explodes his counterpart. DCG with a pick. And you can't build a wall if you're dead, Clement. <laughs> Very true words being spoken right there. Beautiful stuff from DCG. Look at the angles that they're cutting through. They're coming from the old jungle of CFO. So... CFO don't really have a time to react to that left flank. We also have to remember that right now, Sivir, if she gets one of those takedowns, she's going to reset that yep. on the hunt and go even further with a UV on top. And the, the cooldown reduction or ability haste is now called that you get with, you know, those auto attacks, 0 0.5 on Ooh. each of your abilities. Like, Boomerang Blade comes out left, right, and center, ricochet galore. It's so nice to have late game Sivir in a team fight now because it's just so reliable, Clement is. But Chris Gardy picked up the rapid fire cannon, so speaking of reliable, he'll now have the range. While Renan's Hurricane is an interesting purchase here from Shun. And I guess he knows that he is yeah. going to be the one who has to kite it out. Uh, I think he understands it's a dive com. Let's see if Rest gets a dive out of this one as he does Leaky get the mega. Um, He's just autoing him to death. Rest all these. Leaky goes mega against the wall. See you later, kid. All right, Rest getting bested. Never thought I'd see the day. The Weaver's Wall is good. Chris Carter running away, but Nesty Dolby, no denied. He can't get out in the nick of time, and Shield Rev actually ends up one. killing Koala. And I'm an Australian. I know that's the reason to call the police, as it is a one for one. And CFO finally making use of the play, but it's in response with the whole map burning in the process. Yeah, Leaky with the solo kill in the bot lane decides not to have top, gets a little bit back. Uh, but, you know, we are seeing some opportunities open up on the uh, on the flip side. Finally, a good use of the Weaver's Wall to try to catch back line. They got the flash onto Priscotta, which makes him that much more vulnerable to mission um, later on. So we'll see if that ed does end up panning out. We're going to watch the top lane play again. I believe this was actually started by BCG. Yeah, they weren't just happy with the two-man on bot. They wanted a little bit more. And that turned out to be a bit over aggressive as <laughs> that he tries to pee him out yeah. and gets stopped. I just love he takes Koala with him as well. It's like, how dare you? Uh, CFO, again, the, the most proactive play we've seen in this game. Mm. And it comes off the back of DCG still trading out for the better because in a turret, the bottom side almost goes down. DCG were able to give Leaky that solo kill, or at least he took it himself as. Uh, DCG now knows that CFO are gearing up for the Dragon, but Clement, my concern is that there is a 50 CS lead top laner who almost has himself a force of nature, and we almost have a Banshee from Nesty. Like, they are accelerated. Absolutely, and whoever that 
death, um, the, the death oh, no. man plate touches is gonna get trapped. Hana, maybe not reading the patch notes as well. Qualifying to this, but the Everfrost use is so good. The poke as well from the Boomerang Blade. Chris Carter's already got me on the Hunter's Leaky. Now has a mini nah as he goes mega. The Yumi helps out. Mission is destroyed. And CDVC flying oyster are not flying in this game. Uh, Mission just hasn't been able to find some good positioning here. That's the you know one thing I do criticize him about him a lot is he doesn't play all that safe on uh, champions that are relatively lower range to begin with. You know, yeah. that's gonna give DCG the second Hexac Drake. <sighs> CFO, I, I still think this composition is strong enough where they can come back into the late game, yeah. but they're not holding on all that well. What we've been seeing is CFO constantly be getting picked off in the middle of the map just with these flanks coming in. And I don't think they realize that the dead man's point was really there. That's gonna keep someone in place right there. They have a good anti-ramp. Um, but I don't see the, the reason to chase on the left side. I feel like that was way over ambitious and it, you know, it kind of goads mission to go into a bad spot. Walking over that yeah. ramp, it's definitely not the place you want to be. And, and we kind of talked about DCG's comp in draft, right? As you said, ultra reliant one punch. The other thing we didn't mention is if DCG find themselves ahead, like this zipper adds so much follow-up. Uh, the, the movement speed as well, Clement, like... Leaky mm. is taking names now with the force of nature. Hana's in a great position as well, despite being... He was like 30, 40 CS in jungle down in the first 10 minutes. Has now caught up, now taking over. And even though there's like CS leads elsewhere, topside, in reverse mid, bots even. I think the biggest thing to take away right now is that DCG know how to pull a trigger. That's what we've known them for, is uh, maybe CFL are going to do a little bit of that as Koala comes through. Weaver's wall to zone him out. But as mission comes down here, Baron is being started. Leaky looking for the TP, but he won't be able to find it with the seismic shove as he buys time. A hop looking for availability, and Leaky still there. He's gonna get over the wall, Ooh. almost kills mission, who flashes. But in the meanwhile, Cannon Barrage comes up on the top side. They don't have enough damage, and DCG's attempt is thwarted. So a CFO win it will be. Well, that was such a smart play from CFO. They actually only expend one TP, making it look like two. And the uh, mission is actually able to hold on to his teleport and still get another wave. A really smart <laughs> play by uh, CFO right there. When, when you see the TPs, you really don't know if it's a one TP or a two TP. So you kind of have to back out, respecting that anyway. And I, I'd say CFO with a very decent comeback, they cut the gold lead to two. They did it. It was looking pretty dire. I mean, that one pick off delaying Baron as well. And finding the shutdown on Leaky. That's the more important mm. part. Uh, Clement, did you see who went to? Is it Mission or Rest? Who picked that up? Because either way, never mind. Doesn't matter because Gemini is going to be flushed on, but he has the Unbreakable. But hey, what did I say? They can always pull a trigger. DCG don't back down with a TP in. It's go time, baby. There's also no smite on the other team, so DCG should have this on a lock. The only question, I think, is, is can CFO damage this with the Weaver's Wall? Can they get some stragglers on the way out? Use goes. Well, Mission wants to come on in. Good poke down. Leaky about to go Meganar, though. Decides to shove backwards. Will it kill him in time? No. As they turn for the play, outside the pitch, forget the Baron. They want to kill them all. Oh, As Leaky gets one. On down, though. Shun is still free firing. CCG is three man. They got a three man. Mission's quiet all game. Then he pops up and hits them with that one. Oh boy, what a massive play coming in from CFO. I feel like DCG actually overchased a little bit on that one. Sivir was dealing out so much damage. They could have held the pit there and just get the clean smite off. But they chase and Mission is able to turn around. I think the most critical thing there was that uh, the focus fire was on Koala. And Koala, before he goes down, he still is able to get a second two off in the fight. That was absolutely huge with the knockup and the time buys over. We're gonna watch this one again. Gemini, of course, we know gets caught off. Uh, I think most people just forgot, forget about Hextech Drakes. We see this so often. They just kind of forget that the enemy can get back on the map quickly. So that happens. And let's watch the turnaround from DCG. The big problem for them is 
big focus down on Koala. And Koala's a very tanky player at this point. He has the ultimate there. It takes a long time to kill him. They don't or aren't able to focus off on the shit. And Koala even gets to get a knockup on the end off the leaky. Most mad fed member here. And oh. this is the play. Oh, the oh, three flick. Dude, every time we, you know, if we chat badly about mission, then he just pops up like he's back. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mission. Father mission, I'm so sorry. Please. Uh, three items, you know. That three knockback is now brought him back into the game. He's flamerizing Nessie, and he always had a big CS lead in this lane, but just wasn't relevant. And now Look we've got a this. CFO that have almost matched in gold climb at 500 for lead, which is nothing. And they can contest this dragon. Look how confident they are now. Shin also has the infinity edge. This is absolutely yeah. massive. He's going to get that before Chris Scott. A big damage uh, spike here. As long as they keep Koala in the front line, they should be fine. All Leaky has no Megana. Hold on to the W. Leaky has no Megana yet as well. Worth mentioning here as Dragon resets for a moment. Taking the Yumi on track as Leaky about to go Mega CFO. It'll depend on this only the one punch there with Nesty having his own. But as they get zoned off and the steel doesn't come through, even as close as it was with the smite, DCG pick up the third dragon and even against the Baron Up team, excuse me, as the Baron Up team, DCG now trying to find opposite angles to push forward and equalize some of the goals. A little bit surprised about that from uh, CFO. I actually felt like they could have tried to play that a little bit more. Yeah, get some more. Riscata. Riscata knocked back. Okay, the Cannon Barrage is actually going to turn it anyway. The final chapter of Hana tries to spin his way out of there, but Koala is unbreakable for a reason. With Hana dying, CFO with the 5v4. DCG have to peace out of there. Clement, we are starting to see CFO just run with it when DCG have no more steam in the tank. And after this, I feel like CFO are going to retake the gold lead, uh, just clearing up the jungle here. This is a problem I feel like with the DCG's composition. Once you start losing one of some of those fights, the weakness of Galio becomes very apparent. Because you're just missing someone in terms of the damage uh, profile here. So, DCG are hyper-reliant on Criscata for their damage, but unfortunately their kill allocation is pretty poor. Criscata has zero kills so far out of 12. Uh, so it just, it's a little bit unfortunate, but also just the fact that this composition does kind of have that expiration date. Just picked up the Infinity Edge, but 0, 2, and 5, further to your point. You know, he's been behind, considering that the whole of the map has been focusing around Leaky's lane, around the jungle interference mm. provided by Hana. And, you know, Nesty is 110 CS behind. He might be matching items for now, but they are utility items, Clement. Banshees, Zonyas. We're only just getting towards the Void Star fourth. Whereas you look on the other side, Mission has a Shadow Flame, which against Galio is just so OP. You know, against yeah. all the shielding that comes through from Yumi, the value coming out of Mission right now is massive. And with the Void Staff on top of that, it is just going to be hell for Chris Carter if he ever gets caught again. So for DCG, Clement, give me a bit of a roundup because Baron's coming up in a minute 30. And I want to know what they do to bring this game back with the semi-global they have and the Siva who is getting into that scaling point. So DCG still have a good shot at just bursting someone down and just killing them. So the main thing here is I think that whenever they know Alistar is somewhere else, they can make a pretty proactive play. So as we just saw, Koala in the mid lane trying to pick up some uh, some of those stacks and experience. Then DCG can move in very deep into the top side. Um, the same happens if Leaky gets to get a bit of a split push and they get game plank on the other side. Then they can move in. But right now, if they move in 5v5 and they just run at CFO, I think CFO are going to make them pay. The damage here is just way too high. You're going to be rushing through these barrels. And the, uh, uh, the Zeri is also extremely fed. Not to LDR, mention, yeah. Mission can kind of one-shot your front line at this point. So DCG are hyper-reliant on side lane picks and for CFO to not be able to respond in equal numbers. And let's be real, items like Zonya's kind of counter that as well, right? Mm. You buy time, you give CFO windows after everything's been exhausted, and the Zonya's that was just picked up flat out by Mission here as he shows an item advantage over an ST. I also mentioned while you were talking there, Clement, that the Infinity Edge has been picked up, uh, of course, before. LDR's the one I'm trying to say, yeah. Shun. 
So, full item advantage between the AD carries. As Dragon's coming up in a minute 15. Baron's now up again. Gold is neck and neck. And Leaky in a Megana. It's going to come down to him, but a ward's there. And so this Megana is going to run out of steam. And CFO just back off and play with the time. Really nicely done by CFO here. They actually bait Leaky to overcommit a little bit. Come in. And great positioning there by Koala. You can't stop the Meganar from engaging on you by just headbutting in the way. So, you know, good positioning. They give uh, Gangplank a little bit more time to get his Infinity Edge now. And this is where Kruskala's life starts to get pretty hard. He is outranged without the Ricochet or Boomerang. So, uh, I, I, I just feel like in these team fights, you have to see Hana go in first. You have to see a really close coordination. Um, with Leaky and a Nasty, uh -oh. or else they're just gonna get blown up. Minus walked over there. Ooh. Spidey senses from Nasty. They're not able to get the Banshee's Veil, which is gonna help him out. But as Baron has spawned, DFO with this very fed Zeri. I'm gonna do this so quick. And look, Leaky's not nearby. No Meganar. Clement is just going down with TP being burned. Baron Anna. is going to die. They commit to the play as Chris Carter runs on in. Looking for those dream ricochets. Look at the lineup. Ricochet, 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 ricochet. It bounces, it hurts. But CFO were out in the nick of time. Now with the neutral and this top side push. Super smart play coming in from CFO. They understand that Leaky is the only one that can realistically survive an engagement. They see goes mini, rush the Baron oh, down. And DCG are still not in position right here. Nar isn't here. So we for more. And so they're going to dive. I mean, they're seeing these five good dodges. So Hana goes in, but he's going to be burnt to a crisp as he jumps on. Hextech Dragon taken, but the base is now broken. They don't have a jungler. Chris Carter needs to be the one to defend as CFO are backing away after that free in hip. Yeah, I'm not sure that was totally worth it here, but we have to remember DCG now have the Hextech Soul, which means that if just one fight get, goes well, they can chase down the entirety of the composition right here. An interesting trade for an inhibitor, uh, for sure. Um, but, you know, they're still going to have this buff when the inhibitor comes back up. That's right. And, and look, Clement, there is a lot of wave clear because of one champion in the game, let's be real. And then Chris Carter has now got his LDR too. So he caught up a little bit there with... You know, he's just been picking up so much CS. We're getting the 400 CS Siva. Not the same win con, but definitely feels like uh, late game 80 carries are where we're going to be talking next. And hell, Rest as well, right? Rest is someone who's been bullied all game long, but this GP who has been farming up, catching up to Leaky, now has four and a half items. Rest is massive. So that barrel chain can also catch us by surprise as good weavers walk to set up for the inner tower pop. You can also just take a lot of unnecessary damage, but we should be fine on that one. And uh, DCG, this is so hard for them because they can't find any of the flanks. Uh, CFO doing a really good job at oh, sniping people across walls and also denying digit. There's only one Viz ward onto the left side, and I feel like that's too easy of a ramp for uh, CFO to just seal off here, so yeah, they're just going to move across the map, continue to do this, and will likely play towards the bottom side inhibitor as they have the top over. But just look at that Baron power play, four and a half thousand mm. over that here for CFO. They've taken so much with this one objective, and you know, we come back to how CFO ramped into the game, the scaling we talked about. It's at that point we are getting max items as Shun's going to back now too. Is that GA fully complete? Yes, it is. Full item on the Zeri and almost full items on mission on rest too. But we are just hitting that point. So we're getting mega late. Tell me a little bit again about your favoritism for who scales better because I think it's going to be a hard job for DCG when, as you said, Nesty is not holding that same punch as he did earlier in the game. I definitely think CFO have the better late game comp. We talked yep. about this in the draft phase as well. Um, this, as long as CFO don't group up for a big Meganar chain, I think they're fine. They can survive the initial first damage. And right now, it's not like the earlier mid game where Galio damage actually matters. It doesn't. Uko manage doesn't matter. Yep. So, it, it's CFO basically just have to look at Sivir. And that's all they need to pay attention to. Once Sivir goes down, no damage on DCG. You, you'll roll through the entire composition. This note, by the way, like all those members that can get onto Sivir in the back line, 
Gemini has an, uh, a Frostfire Gauntlet. So it, we got Tank Viego coming through with the Kempunk Chainsword, or Bruiser more like it. Uh -huh. But s so many ways to survive here. That initial burst we keep talking about. So makes it harder here for DCG is CFO, look at the sync up. Topside wave crashing in, rest wait. Bottom waits as well. See if we're gonna make it so all these waves are coming in at the same time, but Sipper exists, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that boomerang clear is just uh, yeah. ready that, again. That, that's depressing to be honest. W. <laughs> Goodbye, minion wave. Best thing about Sipper, does the wall matter? No. Chris Carter simply presses W and Q and it's gone. So getting into the base is gonna be a different thing completely. I like a CFO tried. You know, they did exactly as I said. They were like, no, the top lane's pushing. Super minion wave. Let's go bot. This is smart macro yep. play. And Sivir just says no. Uh, so, ah. Uh, no, I, I feel like that, that kind of feels a little bit unfair with how far the ricochet can reach on the minion wave. But this is where we're at. I feel like CFO need to change tack. Gonna have to play for the Elder this time around. <laughs> Dude, the fact that it goes eight now and it can bounce between minions. Yeah. The, the the crazy thing was before it would go to every minion indefinitely and it would clear waves. But if you have a short minion wave, remembering that there are only seven minions in a wave, you know, in a cannon wave that is, it, it feels super easy. It's now for the setup, the barrel chain not connecting. We're grouping around mid Clement because Chris Carter continues to just wave clear and be a boss. CFO moving up towards Baron, but Elders in a minute as well. These timers could sync up. Baron's going to come in first, so I think CFO are doing the right thing here by putting their foot down onto the top side. Again, they have a lot of barrels, and DCG don't have a lot of range. So they're holding on to a very strong position here, and I, I feel like DCG needs some sort of a flank to go in onto this one. But uh, Leaky's still so far away. I wonder how Leaky will approach this. He's even clearing the mini waves. So the CFO are happy to just start this one. I mean, TP's available, but Mega Nah, as you said, it's going to be pop now. So if he TP's, it has to be on the dot here. As Baron comes through, and it's gone. Okay, DCG, now's the time not to take the fight back away. As Elder's going to be up in 20 seconds, Clement. And the extra bit of stats here for CFO might do them good for the upcoming fighters. Teleports in from Leaky just to be here. Yeah, you know, getting a BF sword, definitely not I mean, a bad thing, but here comes the Chris slows. Carter in a choke, Chris Carter in a choke, he's got the ricochets, and I do not want to see CFO move to a choke against the Sivir Clement. <laughs> I feel like that's another condition as to how they could lose the game, is with Baron, they're channeling up the mid wave, but Elder's going to go down, it's going to go down yeah. super quick, they need to get hit. Weaver's wall, 4k, 3k, right. oh my no, TCG get the Elder, Leaky's going to go Mega Knight, and even though they've taken a massive chunk, CFO can't fight! DCG <laughs> with the Elder. That was the worst wall possible! I don't understand the wall! What, what was that mission? He literally walled off his entire front line. You know, people didn't believe in the wall at first, did they? And then they still didn't believe in the wall. And then there was no wall. You know what I'm referring to? Everyone out there understands. Missions wall there. Not as good as what we saw on the side blade. DCG to have the Elder. And Clement is not permanent, but this buff is going to allow them to take these 5v5s when we weren't so confident. Oh man, that one was, uh, that one definitely was an interesting play right there. CFL still had a pretty decent chance of walking in onto that one and, uh, you know, contesting, but, oh, the angle on missions, Talia just, oh man, I, that one was a weird one. That one definitely tells you that, you know, Talia definitely more of a takeaway pick than uh, yeah. what CFO pick themselves most of the time. So I, I think DSG, this is a great chance for them to just get an inhibitor. I don't think CFO are going to be able to contest. The teams are close enough and the engage is dangerous enough to the point where I, I feel like they can just go for this. And you can even see, you know, uh, mission's not even here. Oh my god, rest. Hang on. Clement, the problem is, you know what I'm seeing? Ricochet yeah. near a turret. And with Elder, Rest can actually just die from the passive. Now he has the GA, but with Elder coming in and Meganar as well, Sivir on turret control is so strong. As Nesty looks for an angle now with the flash, the flank here. Not the flank, rather, the escape from DCG. He's going to be taken and uh, inhibited now, broken. Base damaged. 
DCG giving back some of the medicine recently given out by CFO. Yeah, and this top one is going to chain into, uh, um, I believe Baron Buff might come up a little bit sooner compared to the Elder. Yeah, it will. So yeah, it will. They, they get the bot lane, they chain that into another big objective top, and this is one where CFO, uh, I, I feel like they can still wait it out just fine. They do have the wave clear to, to survive this one, but I don't think they have the timers. Um, I'm not sure if they have the timers for Baron. Uh, they will have the timers for Baron. So they, they will be able to walk in onto the Baron without the Elder Dragon. But I think yeah. this is also still the best place for DCG to strike. There's a lot of distance there. They do have the Hextech sold to be able to chase targets down. I feel like the, the game has shifted now to, to where DCG are just looking at that objective. This time, I don't think they're going to let CFO rush it. They're just going to walk there, use the Elder Drake to kind of ward everyone away, use the bot lane and uh, super minions to pull CFO and just start the Baron. It's so close, though. I mean, gold irrelevant. Soul's still there for this. DCG, remember that they took that as leaky now on a side lane. But look, it's because they were spotted. CFO was spotted through mid. Mm. And leaky, now as he takes this, is going to get no complaints from anyone in CFO. This will drop down, opens up the inhibitor turret next, and Leaky just adding pressure two minutes before the Baron. And Clement, I have to say, 44 minute game, and Shun's gonna oh, stop the back. Leaky. Weaver's wall might be hop out here. Is this a crucial mistake? No, he does it too early. He'll go into Megana, but Destiny needs to help him. Flashing on Dimension, trying to get the mid laner, not popping the ulti. Good he relief out. bounce here as he survives. Because Destiny now nearby is Koala, important transition, but he has the unbreakable will. With Yumi on top, Koala flashes on. And that means CFO now. There's a couple of tools down, but also those flashes being so much in the late game. That was beautifully done there by Leak. He actually goes into close range versus Shin, dodges a lot of those burst fires, and then turns around onto mission to force the Zanias and to just walk away. Beautiful stuff from him. And that's going to lead into a situation where we have a 40 second difference between yeah. the Baron timer and the uh, the Elder Drake. Also, if you look at the inhibitor, that's still 220. So it means that DCG, if they clear out this bottom wave, um, it's already a uh, double super minion stacking onto this one. DCG, Clement. Yeah? I'm gonna say one thing to you because I'm worried if fight's gonna start off. I need you to tell me six item Navori quick plays Chris Carter. He sold his boots. And as we get towards the fight, the reason I have to interrupt you is because the Shun goes over the wall. He means this Siva is absolutely unleashed. DCG forcing out yet another flash here from Rest. Clement, you're up again because with Baron now 30 seconds away, CFO are getting caught out left, right, and center. Yeah, this is so hard for them to walk in, and they can't escape here. They're relying on the TP from uh, GP. So if I'm DCG, I'm just going to charge at you. Once I get the chance, all I need is one auto attack, get the Dead Man's Plate slow down, yep. and I can start the chase. Dead Man's Plate and Hextech Soul. Oh, true. There's so much slow here. And uh, remember what we talked about with the ricochets. You know, you get to the point where you get the cooldown comes off and a ricochet hits because it's bouncing so many times. And as Leaky goes, Meganize and zone them off. Look at the damage. Six item Sivir that just takes his Panabarage being used once again on the objective. Might needs to come in. Hana finds it quite easily. Rest taking damage on the back as here's the hero's entrance, but it is defensively used to get out in the nick of time. Ricochets galore. And CFO now heading towards the Elder. 10 seconds, Clement, a 46 minute game. It comes down to this. And we have Leaky coming back with full HP. There needs to be a good Done. barrel chain onto the back line. Chris Gata needs to go down. Yeah, and Hana is chosen the setup. I mean, Chris Carter doesn't have the Yumi. Mission, They're looking for Mission, but look, Mission by himself. Leaky coming back in to see if he's burned. At least they get the flash out, but that was one from Hana. We'll see if only have five members. Mission low, but Nessie with an angle. TP, TP, look at Leaky. They're going to finish the game, game here. Chris Carter's running forward. Koala's already dropped the ulti. One good comes in, but again, new Shiver just hurts so much. Hana's buying time, oh, stopping him back. While Leaky's on the last turret, Chris Carter's still alive. And even with so GA, Siva is now absolutely focused. Is that the best late game scale of coming? I don't know. But with a triple kill going down and Leaky going into GA, he might not end the game, but he makes it so damn close.
Yeah, it's gonna be a 4v2 onto the bot lane here. And the question is, can they actually wave clear this? I don't think so. No. BCG though, let's see, they're gonna go with the minion wave already in mid, at least double inhibitor at least for now. But the timers oh, are still God. 30 seconds up. I think I mean Ricochet against Tara, I mean Brett running forward, doesn't get the barrel! So Chris Carter survives oh. for now, runs up with his GP! And DC in this match matters so much! This could be what they look back on and where they secured first here with our first place matchup going over to Deep Cross Gaming. Oh, beautiful game from DCG to take this one down. A lot of nail biter moments. We have to start from the very get go here. DCG found great uses of Nesty's Galio. They really caught. Um, shouldn't off guard in the bot lane. To be honest, uh, Zeri was winning the lane the entire time, but after the two kills went over to the side of Triscata, that no longer was the case. And then we saw a huge Herald fight that gave Nesty a 2 0 3 start into the game. That was oh, yeah. the setup table for them to snowball out of these drakes to control the mid lane. And then we saw the comeback from CFO. It was double Baron steals taken before DCG could even react. It was starting to get to the point where we saw Shin was actually in the lead. There was a flame horizon in the mid lane. Uh, but I think the biggest problem here from, uh, uh, from, from CFO was just they weren't able to close down on the Elder Dragon. But yeah. we're going to take a look here at the last team fight. Again, CFO had already lost a lot of HP for this coming in. We have Leaky rejoining the fight. And uh, Hana also rejoining the fight with uh, a, a full refill here. Vision tries to interrupt the back, gets caught out on the top, and this is just such a smart move right here because they uh, they see that CFO start the Elder Dragon and then they immediately go for the TP play. They don't even see them start it, they just go for the TP play, forcing the re engage on the other side here. Now, this actually was kind of a. You no, know, all in all, I, I'm not sure I really like this play it was very close but because you could tell that Chris Cotta could have gone down to Shun right there it just was a great spell shield on Chris Cotta that actually prevented him from being knocked up if he actually got knocked up there he was dead <laughs> yeah true true I mean he goes into GA though right that was the yeah. problem we're in late game GA's come through from pretty much everyone and I don't know Clement like late game Sivir now I just Ooh. after watching that that is insane damage I'm ready to look at the numbers but I want to say for DCG, as I said at the end, this game matters so much for them because their schedule looks so much easier than CDBC Flying Oyster. Now moving to six wins on their streak beyond Jewish team Frank Esports, we could actually have a new face, first place team with uh, Deep Cross Gaming potentially being able to finish at 15 with the way this team's looking. And I think a big storyline is we can't start to question, is Leaky this just the best top laner there is? We saw a oh, rest yeah. put YSKM in his place, and now Leaky is doing the same thing towards the game plank on this NAR. It's looking like the top lane is super competitive between these three players. Um, just going back to the draft a little bit, I actually felt like DCG versus CFO, this draft was still fine for CFO. It was just uh, they gave over way too much early game control to... Um, yeah. Uh, to, to DCG. If they were equal, I, I felt like this game actually would have gone quite smoothly for them. Shun was very far ahead uh, throughout most of the game, and you can see the Galio dip. Even with a fed Galio, it, it comes mid late game. He's not able to farm up much. You know, he has yeah. to stick with the team, and you see the flame horizon there. So I, I would say this is DCG just outplaying, understanding their compositions a little bit better than the side of CFO rather than you know, kind of a straight. Sure. Um, Draft Which is a common common theme, right? As we look at the yeah. damage. Oh my <laughs> god! How did Gemini do four thousand damage when he started with like a forty CS lead? Wait, Gemini did less than. No way. Gemini did oh, less yes. than Koala. Oh yes. What? Yes. And I think it's kind of easy to understand what happened right here because number one, CFO just weren't getting kills, so he wasn't able to switch onto anyone. We saw Sim Criscata just being alive the entire time. So yeah. that was one of the big things. And the other one is, um, I don't think that Diego does a whole lot outside of the tower diving phase. You know, the, the answer was we're supposed to all in on this bot lane with the Alistar as the counter here. Hey. It did work out. Let's go, though. Um, we know it had to be the six item silver. 38% damage. It can go higher, Clement. Not enough. You know, we can go higher. We can go to 80k next time. Uh, 48,000, that's good. 
but Chris Carter, you know, you can go even higher than that. I mean, that was such a long and hefty game. And to be fair, that Chris Carter was talked about, as you said, Clement, I can see a world where Siva can win these fights. Yeah. You know? And Siva did win those fights, <laughs> along with other elements coming through. But Chris Carter just didn't like dying. So nice to see Siva get that uh, 600 CS win condition. I guess and we'll call it. This is the weird thing. I actually feel like Sivir's more worthy of the first pick in most situations uh, over yep. the Zeri. We have been seeing a lot of Zeris being first pick, and then the other side just goes Yumi, Sivir, and wins the game afterwards. Sivir has so much utility, and just the laning phase is so strong. I, I just feel like Sivir's completely busted on this patch. We're going to take a yeah. look at the wins right here. Two big, I would call them semi-upsets in Frank over PSG and Deep Cross over CFO. True. A lot of people are thinking CDBC flying. I mean, I thought CDBC flying Oyster were the best team in the league. Mm -hmm. um, but Deep Cross Gaming now 12 and three. And as I said before, with their schedule looking so realistic, I think DCG have a big chance to lock in first. Now, of course, PC, PSG Talon can do the same, Clement, mm -hmm. as we might end up having a tie up in that bubble because J Team We'll finally get to play again next week so we can find out if they're able to uh, catch up to these big dogs in the league. Yeah, they still have six games to go, so that's a potential of 14 wins. Definitely still up in the air there. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the table, Jewish team still has a chance to get into playoffs. It's a very, uh, very small you, chance. But uh, yeah. they definitely could overtake either Impunity or Metatoxin team. Well, we have to say sorry to our Malaysian representatives. Sen 9 again is going to miss the first gonna, gonna love you, Clement. You know, do his team right there down at the bottom. And you're like, it's like, you know, owning owning like an antique store, right? And there's this lamp in the corner. And no one's looking at it. No one's touching it. People are like, oh, I don't really think it'll Where's work in my home. And you're there and you're, and you're saying, guys, this lamp, you know, it's, it might not be electronic, but you can, it's fun. The kids will love it. You're really trying to sell it. And I believe in you, Clement. I agree. As we look at next week, next Friday, Dewish Team versus J Team, Clement. Sell me that lamp. Uh, anything is possible. There That's you go. That's a terrible pitch. <laughs> there you go, Clement. Well done. J Team are back next week. That's the main part. They've got a lot of games to play. They're already secure for playoffs. But again, top four is well within their sides. Today with Frank Esports, though. I don't know. I don't think the split's going to be as easy as uh, we would have thought for a team like J-Team, especially with them overtaking Beyond Gaming and Beyond... I don't know, Clement. Uh, would you say Beyond is secure, say even against Jewish team? There's no gap between top two and the rest of the team squads. Yep. That is the biggest difference in this split compared to all the rest. Before, it yep. was always a PSG plus CFO plus Beyond Gaming. This split, true. everyone is in the mix. <laughs> That's true. I mean, even last split, I thought it was more, you know, less of a league where last time it was like oh one team maybe a half a team right second seed of pcs uh not really considered but that aside mr clement chu thank you for selling lamps uh thank you for being alongside with me for the penultimate week ladies and gentlemen we go to a break we go to an absolute ending of a break as it's called in the business for some reason if i get my words together and we return with you for the last week of pcs next week we'll see you on thursday be there